October 11th for Planning Commission, right? Yes. And we're not having a BCC in November, the, the um, quasi? Oh, we're not? Day, sir. So the 27th is not going to be a QPA. It's going to be a regular one. We're waiting for Sammy. Mostly. Okay. And mostly drop off nets. I still don't listen to him. I still don't listen. I still don't listen to him. If I could have everyone's attention this morning, uh, welcome. Uh, we're running a little bit behind. We're waiting on our PowerPoint presentation, so it'll probably be out on another 10 minutes before we get started.
and Sammy. Good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Uh, welcome to the September 5th uh, Walton County Tactical Review Committee meeting. I uh, appreciate everybody coming out early this morning. Uh, we've got a fairly lengthy agenda. Um, our minutes are going to be deferred until the next meeting. Um, we're very happy to have uh, Karen Owen back as our board secretary. Um, do we have any other announcements this morning? All right, moving right ahead. We'll move right into the project review. Item number one, this is Emerald Transformer. This is a major development request to approve by final order. It's been reviewed by Renee Bradley. Uh, Renee, if you could briefly introduce this project for us. Yes, sir. This is a major development order application submitted by Baker Engineers on behalf of Emerald Transformer, requesting approval to demolish an existing 8,799 square foot warehouse to be replaced with a 16,093 square foot warehouse on a developed industrial site on 24.05 acres with a future land use of industrial. Uh, this project is located at the corner of Sunrise Road and State Highway 83. Uh, this project was continued from our last TRC meeting in which we had an opportunity to be able to give them comments for that meeting. Um, they have responded to all comments everything's been approved at this point and are ready to go to Planning Commission. Thank you, Renee. Do we have a representative of the applicant here? Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. I'm Michelle Baker, Baker Engineers, and um, I think we've addressed all the comments. The only thing outstanding is there is a safety upgrade um, permit through FDOT and that's been applied for. I'm just waiting for them to give me final approval, but I've talked to them about it and everything's going forward. Okay. So I don't, unless y'all have any questions for me, don't have anything else. Uh, this looks like a pretty straightforward application. It's an existing industrial facility in North Walton. Uh, and this expansion of the warehouse supports diversification of our economy in Walton County. Um, and provides additional new jobs in North Walton. Um, do we have a recommended motion? I recommend a motion we move this project forward to the Planning Commission. Thank you, Renee. Do we have a motion at the dais? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, likewise? This motion carries, and we'll move forward to the Planning Commission at the next uh, advertising opportunity. Uh, this moves us to item number two, the PCH office building. Uh, we have a request to continue to the October 3rd TRC meeting. Um, do we have a motion at the dais? Motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second by Sammy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise? This motion carries. This item will be continued to 8.30 a.m. on October 3rd uh, Technical Review Committee meeting in this location. This moves us to item number three. This is a minor development order that's been reviewed by Tim Brown. Um, Tim is uh, out of the office this week, and Bob's going to be sitting in for him. Uh, Bob, if you will briefly introduce this project. Yes, sir. Um, this is a minor development order application submitted by Great and Beer Company Brew Pub LLC on behalf of Jamie Pierce, requesting to enclose 450 square feet pre-existing front porch enclosure on plus or minus 1.067 acres with a future land use of residential preservation. The project is located from the intersection of 283 and County Highway 30A, drive east two miles. It's located on the south side of the road and is identified by the parcel number in your packet. Um, Mr. Chair, there, um, there are a few, a few comments. I don't see anything that would um, that would be um, a delayer. So um, I'll turn it over to the applicant for for any questions. Thank you, Bob. Is the applicant present? Um, okay. 
Um, this is a minor development, and after this uh, recommendation, this will be final agency action. <clears throat> uh, and in that uh, context, we'll open a public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to comment on this particular application in any manner? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Bob, do we have a recommended motion? Um, yes, Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to um, conditionally approve pending successful resubmittal and then issuance of the DO. Thank you, Bob. Do we have a motion at the dais? Motion. Motion by Sammy. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise? This motion carries and subject to satisfaction of comments, we'll move to the development order stage. That brings us to item number four. This is the Foreman Large Scale Amendment. Uh, it's a request to approve by ordinance. Uh, this will also be heard at the Planning Commission and the Board of County Commissioners. Um, it's a large scale amendment submitted by Jenkins Engineering on behalf of Charles Foreman. Um, and it's been reviewed by Bob Baranti. Bob, would you briefly introduce it for us? Yes, Mr. Chair, as you said in the um, introduction, this is being um, represented by Jenkins Engineering on behalf of Charles Foreman. The current um, future land uses are conservation and conservation residential two to one. They're requesting to amend um, future land use on 282 acres, 0 0.05, from conservation and conservation residential two to one to low density residential and neighborhood infill. Uh, this is this project is located from the US 33198 intersection west on US 98 approximately 2.5 miles north on Veterans Road and proceed to the north end of the roadway um, this does um, this does present an orderly flow and logical development pattern to the comprehensive plan and um, Staff would like to turn it over to Mr. Jenkins for further questioning. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, I'm Scott Jenkins with Jenkins Engineering. Um, Colleen Castile is also here this morning to represent the applicant on this request. Um, we did receive the comments on this and really don't have any questions. I'd just like to point out a couple of things um, with this. This is just a land use change request for this and there will be future phases of this is if it moves forward that where they will go through the PUD process and the major development order process um, a lot of been one of the benefits to point out to this is as part of what their intended plans are is to extend the roadway from Publix directly north and connect all the way through to chat Holly for a connector roadway um, and I just want to point out also this is kind of tied to a previous ordinance you guys did as far as wetland enhancements and things and one of the reasons why they're requesting to go to the LDR land use is not necessarily for that much of an increase of density as it is for some flexibility to be able to do some enhancement on some of the existing wetlands and things that wouldn't be allowed in the in the conservation residential which doesn't allow any kind of impact at all um, Colleen and I will be happy to answer any questions you guys have thanks Scott This particular project will be heard by the Planning Commission and the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, we'll take the opportunity to open up the floor for any technical comments related to this particular application. Yes, sir, Mr. Tricker. Yes, uh, Fred Tricker, T-R-I-C-K-E-R. Uh, just got a few questions, really. Uh, uh, we noted in the application that the justification for the land use change is housing, uh, cost of housing, and uh, I guess it, this really doesn't qualify as affordable housing area, does it? I mean, it very well may be. It could as be. part of this proposed this proposal. Okay, and in terms of workforce housing, is there a dollar figure that we can use to say? You know, in order to qualify as workforce housing, what's the dollar value of a house that, that is affordable? Uh, I'm not sure that I have that information uh, for you this morning. Uh, the applicant may have some information on that. Would 
workforce be based on the median income, I wonder, or percentage of the median yes, sir. income? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, so we should be able to come up with a number, shouldn't yes. we? Yes. At some point? Yes. Okay, that would be and, useful. And I suspect one, if this land use change is, is approved and they do move forward with the proposed plan unit development, at that time they'll bring forth that information. Yeah, and it would be useful, too, to, to have an estimate of what uh, houses in that area are going to cost. Just but that, to do a comparison. that um, is really the basis for this particular application. Um, they're proposing to to develop something that is in the affordable workforce housing range, uh, right. not in the vacation rental range. Right. So that's something that we need to examine, I think, as part of the review process. Yes, sir. And we would appreciate the the uh, South Walton Community Council's participation as we move through this process. Okay. That, that's that's good. Thank you. Uh, okay, in terms of the floodplain, uh, comprehensive plan policy uh, 1.13.1 uh, says that we, uh, our policy is to retain rural densities within major floodplain slash wetland corridors. Does this qualify as a major floodplain wetland corridor? Uh, it's 47% floodplain. I'm sorry, 47% wetlands. Would you like to address this, Scott? Yeah, I think so. Um, the floodplain here is all in unnumbered floodplain. It's all in the, the unnumbered A zone. So whenever this moves forward to the technical phase, they would have to actually do an evaluation of what that floodplain elevation is in this area and establish that. Some of those areas will be removed. There may be some areas that are added to it. And then they will have to go through that process and do the compensatory storage that's associated with, with anything within the floodplain and meet all those requirements that are associated with it. And, and as part of this, uh, the wetland enhancements, that is one of the ideas to provide some additional compensatory storage, some regional stormwater ponds, things that would help improve the situation in that area. So. Okay. Uh, in terms of it being an unnumbered, I think is what he said, yes, A zone. Sir. So that means that we don't un we don't know what the base flood elevations are. Yes, sir. That is correct. In time, okay. So uh, given that this is pretty flat land, just looking at the topographicals, there's not much difference in elevation between the high spots and the low spots. It's really flat. Uh, Reasonably, I believe. Yeah. So well, the ones I looked at, I didn't look at all of them. So given that it's flat, pretty much. Uh, uh, and that we don't know what the base flood elevations is, uh, would it make sense to require the applicant to do the flood study before we look at changing the land use on it instead of after? Because he has to do it anyway. If he's going to develop it, he's got to do the flood study. Right. In the normal course of development, that flood study would come after right. the land use change. Right. Uh, we don't have any requirements that would require that to be a condition of changing the land use category. It absolutely is a condition of right. approving any development there. Right, and, and I understand that, but uh, I mean, wouldn't it make sense that maybe that the property doesn't support a higher density just based on floodplain considerations? It may be, because you have fill limitations as well. So there's a limit on what you can do with when you got water and floodplains all over the place. Absolutely, and I expect that at the development stage that will be directly addressed. They may not be able to uh, achieve the density that they're asking for, um, and I don't think that's their intent. Um, but at the same time, they're looking to do some wetland enhancement under our new comprehensive plan land development code policies that are in Chapter 4 um, uh, to improve the hydrology of the area. Okay. Um, the applicant may want to want to add to that. I would just say, yeah, um, I mean, Mr. Trigger's right, this will have to be established at a point. We usually don't do that until we have a plan in place because we would like to take into account any of the ponds that are proposed, any compensatory storage and things, so you kind of do it based on what the proposal would be at that time. So. Do you have a, uh, I know it's not part of this application, but do you have a conceptual plan to just kind of give us an idea of what you have in mind for the development? We've done um, several kind of okay. Right. Okay. 
one of the things in the early discussions of the proposed land use change and, and the ultimate uh, plan use and development that might be proposed, um, there have been discussions with Public Works and Mosquito Control District about uh, providing some uh, enhanced uh, treatment for mosquito control ditches mm -hmm. uh, and stormwater that might eventually work its way to the Choctatchee Bay. Right. Uh, so this is a, a multifaceted proposed project. It's very early in the stages. Um, and there are a number of different uh, county departments and agencies that mm -hmm. that have been uh, uh, have had discussions about a proposed project here. Right. Uh, one of those being the the new connector roadway from US 98 to Chat Holly right. uh, through that middle section there, uh, along with the enhancement of of stormwater management uh, and the mosquito control ditches. Right. Okay, it, it would just be a lot easier to get our arms wrapped around it if we had some concept of what it might look like, what they have in mind. And, terms well, and, of, and honestly, yeah. I don't have that concept of exactly what it might right. look like. We haven't uh, had uh, a proposed plan shared right. by the applicant. I know they have, they've proposed a number of different plans internally. Uh, right. They just have not yet shared that with us. Right. Um, but we would expect that the community council would be a, a full participant in the review of that process. Okay, that would be really helpful. Yeah, no yeah thank you. Uh, okay, I guess the, uh, the other issue is uh, environmental. And, of course, with uh, conservation residential, there's a 60% preservation requirement with... Um, um, the proposed land use, uh, there's no preservation requirement. Um, so we not only have a doubling of density, I assume, uh, but we're also potentially losing an awful lot of vegetation that's got to impact both the wetlands and the, and the flood the flood situation. Uh, so that's a major concern. And is there any way to kind of address that? I mean, there needs to be uh, some kind of a study to look at what the impact on the wetlands is of removing a huge amount of vegetation from that property. You're talking 132 acres, 60% uh, of that is a lot of vegetation that's potentially going to be wiped out. So, Would you have like to address that question? Um, and again, that's one of the main reasons that we're actually asking for a different land use is because most of this area is either uh, cleared or planted pines so it doesn't really have a whole lot of environmental sensitivity or, or use in, in this area. Um, and what they would propose to do is to actually enhance those, remove some of those plants and more wetland species in some of the wetland areas, enhance those wetlands, which we would not be able to do in conservation residential because it's just got to be the way it is, basically, according to the, to the rules. Um, I would absolutely anticipate that we would still meet the 60% open space requirement with uh, most of that being the Okay, uh, is there a way to build that into uh, your proposal somehow? I mean, because that, that, would, that would go a long ways, I think, to help. I think the concept that we're able to share some, some concept of that, that we'll be able to show that we'll have that open space. Okay, so. uh, but we could, we, we'd be doing that as part of this process of a land use change. That'd be after that. If it was built in, I think that would be really good. Uh, it would be our recommendation that uh, should this item uh, move to the Planning Commission that the applicant would provide some additional detail about their proposed enhancement okay. of, of the environment. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Thank you, Fred. Uh, we have two more questions. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Covina. Uh, comments to what Fred said and you know I pulled up the uh, wetland maps from the county and uh, this area I'm sorry this is the best map I have this is actually uh, in this area it is the wettest area north of 98 in all of South Walton and I have some concerns with increasing the density and just speaking from what I've seen living here for several decades, 
is uh, there's currently, when it, we get a lot of rain, I've seen people kayaking mm -hmm. down Chat Holly Road. So we're, we're, I think this is gonna just add to our stormwater problems. And I know I've seen time and time again, oh, well, they're gonna have a great stormwater plan. We're not gonna flood. But what happens is I've seen developments where internally they flood, even though there was an approved stormwater plan. Or what happens is the development raises their um, elevations, and this is, this is also the topographic map, as Fred said, extremely flat here. There's no way for the water to really run off. And what happens is, well, maybe they work their project and have no problem in their project, but all of a sudden, folks that have lived here a long time have already established it, their homes. The water then runs onto their property. And you know you can say it won't happen, but you see it time and time again here. And it doesn't maybe happen every day, but we have these events that we have to plan long term for the 10 year, the, the 20 year uh, events that are occurring more and more. And I think by increasing the density here, it's just being irresponsible to the whole community. And I think, you know, when these folks bought their property, they knew what the density was, what it was, um, designated as, and I think they need to work within those parameters. So we don't cause a problem, not only for, for people that would come in and buy their property, but the whole surrounding uh, area. Thank Let you, me Celeste. Turn it Ms. Bowman. Coy Bowman, B-O-W-M-A-N. Okay. The first thing is that um, I'd like to point out how illogical this is because uh, in order to develop all of this, you would have to sink the island. By the time you put enough pipes and wires and all of the infrastructure it would take to develop this many acres is mathematically impossible. Okay, so that's why it doesn't make any kind of logical sense. Secondly, it is illegal to reclassify federal agricultural land. Um, all of these pieces of property are in the Atlantic Pensacola Railroad deed. Therefore, the foremans don't own it. What they purchased from Angus G. Andrews was a timber lease. So they don't actually own it. They just own the leasing rights. All of the paperwork for all of these pieces of property is fake. There is whiteout all over the pages. There are X's Xing out things. There are deeds from different counties in different states, like South Carolina, that have been filed in Walton County as forgeries. There are deeds that go back to cow loans and car loans. So none of the paperwork they have is real because they don't own it. It is a lease. Okay, so now, does anybody here have a copy? of the Atlantic Pensacola Railroad deed. If you'd like to present your comments and your evidence in writing, we'd be happy to accept those. Thank you. Okay, so I'm not done yet. <clears throat> the big square, I think it's 0320. Um, if you look at the satellite image of that square, you can actually see that they have scraped it down to the clay bed. Okay, so they are not actually interested in building anything here. Um, this is a cover-up for their fracking project that they've had out here. If you zoom in on the satellite, you can actually see the holes in the earth that were left by the acoustic logging devices that they stuck down in the ground that have killed our coastal dune lakes. Okay, so they're trying to reclassify this land before the BCC, their friends that illegally change land classifications are gone, okay, because they just lost two seats, all right? So they're trying to push all this land through real fast before they lose their friends on the board that do illegal things for them, okay? So now- Yes, ma'am, do you have any more technical comments? Yes, I this have- not a public hearing. I have sent all of this deedery to the IRS because guess what? The IRS has a copy of the Atlantic Pensacola Railroad deed. Yes, so ma'am, and you're none of this to proper... submit that to us. I don't have to submit it to you. I submitted it to the IRS, the FBI, and the President of the United States, okay? So Thank it you, is, Ms. Bowman. So it is illegal...
for you to reclassify this land. You're done. You're done. Walton County is finished. Good morning. I'd like to address Ms. Cabina's comments. Um, the, uh, the, the property that, um, that we see above us has some densities on it, about 35% about are wetlands. And as we go through the wetland process, as we, as we configured various um, layouts for the property, um, you know, ideas, uh, locations for um, affordable housing, workforce housing, and, um, and uh, um, townhouses, it, it's gonna be a mix of that. Um, the other thing that we're trying to do is where the property abuts up to the um, state on the eastern side is we're trying to um, make it a compatible buffer zone with the state forest. Um, in addition to that, as we go through the, the wetland permitting process, um, what we're, what's happening right now is the Department of Environmental Protection is in the midst of taking over Army Corps of Engineers um, processes. And in doing that, one of the things that they're looking um, to be able to do is to mitigate, allow owners to mitigate their um, wetlands on site. So we're only um, looking at impacting um, about 18 acres of the 120 that are there. Um, but in, in the ultimate design will be um, the language that we worked in putting um, into the comprehensive plan, which is to enhance and restore wetlands in this location. If you drive in and around the property, you can see that the property is in, in essentially straight line um, uh, pine trees, which have been um, planted and harvested over probably a, a hundred year process, a hundred year um, time frame. So, um, so that's what you have now. There are probably maybe three areas that are some really great um, cypress uh, um, uh, mounds, and those would be um, protected in full. Thank you. Do we have any more uh, uh, technical comments or questions on this particular proposal? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll close that portion of the meeting. Uh, we have a recommended motion. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I can make a recommendation to conditionally approve. Um, this this application pending submittal as the applicant said of a of a, a draft site plan and move it forward to um, planning commission once we've received that that document thank you bob do we have a motion at the dais uh, so moved I have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second by Sammy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise. Uh, this item will move forward to the next available planning commission meeting. Item number five, uh, this is the Seagrove Regional Beach Access Small Scale Amendment request to approve by ordinance. It's been reviewed by Bob Baranti. Bob, if you could briefly introduce it for us. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, this is on behalf of the Walton County Board of County Commissioners. Um, the current use is neighborhood infill on the um, future land use map. Um, they are... Um, also, there is um, a sliver of commercial, uh, a little bit of residential preservation, and a section of non-classified on the 1.38 plus or minus acres. Mm -hmm. The request is to change it to parks and recreation to allow for this much needed regional beach access. Um, the parcel numbers are in, on your agenda, and the location of this um, project is from the intersection of County Highway 30A and Eastern Lake Road, west 0.45 miles, and the property is located on the south side of 30A. Um, this proposed amendment is a logical development pattern and, and is in compliance with the comprehensive land use. Um, and the um, 
As I said, this is a much desired location for a regional beach access, and there are no outstanding comments. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to the applicant, which I don't believe he's here today. I can try to answer any additional questions you may have. Thank you, Bob. Do we have anyone uh, representing our TDC this morning? Um, I guess not. Um, this is a request to uh, change the future land use map. It will be heard by the Planning Commission and the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, we'll take the opportunity to invite any technical comments about this particular application uh, from any member of the audience at this time. Uh, seeing none, we'll close that part. Um, do we have a recommended motion? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a recommendation to approve this um, future land use change and move it to the next um, available planning commission meeting for their hearing. Thank you, Bob. Do we have a motion at the dais? Motion. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Motion and a second this morning. Um, I did have one technical comment. We have fire comments um, on the regional. I don't see any issues with it. I'll get something to you. I said, that's the one I called you about yesterday, okay. Sam. I'll, just glancing at it, I don't see any issues with it. I'll get it to you. Is this across from the Tom Thumb on 38? Yeah. Towards <coughs> Thank you, Sammy. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Did we get a second? Did we get a second? Yeah, we did. Um, any opposed likewise? Uh, seeing none, this motion carries. It will be scheduled for the next available planning commission meeting. Thank you. This brings us to item number six, uh, the Mac Bayou lot six and seven major development. Um, this has been reviewed by Bob Baranti also. Bob, could you briefly introduce it for us? Yes, Mr. Chair. This is a major development order application submitted by Jenkins Engineering on behalf of MBRE Healthcare requesting approval to develop approximately 23,692 square feet of general office medical and ancillary space on lot six and seven of the Mac Bayou Center on 1.55 plus or minus acres with a future land use of village mixed use. Uh, Mr. Chair, there's just some few comments. I don't see anything that would um, need it to be delayed. Um, the applicant is here to speak about his project. I would like to turn it over to Scott. Scott Jenkins with Jenkins Engineering again. Um, we did receive the comments. They're all really, really minor. Um, I did have one question on the planning comments. Um, you guys had asked for colored architectural plans for all sides. Um, I just wanted to make sure that's required since this is not in the scenic corridor. If you're not required to have colored ones for that since we don't go to any design review board. Uh, I think this would be outside the scenic corridor review and that's where that would come from. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, other than that, the other comments are pretty, pretty much related to the survey. So don't have any other questions. And this subdivision is one that already has like kinds of development on. It does. Yes. This is lot six and seven of a previously approved master plan. This is actually a reapproval of this same project from a few years back. It just had, expired. And we had a, a DO that expired. Had a DO that expired. Um, basically the same project. There is development on either side and this interconnects with those. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Um, this is, will be a major development or that will be reviewed at the Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners. Um, however, at this time, do we have any technical comments or questions from the audience? Seeing none, we'll close that part of the meeting. Uh, Bob, do we have a recommended motion? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a recommendation to conditionally approve pending successful completion of the comments. And then um, once that's been addressed, move it on to the, uh, the appropriate planning commission meeting. Thank you, Bob. Do we have a motion of the dais? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Sammy. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed likewise? This motion, motion carries and it will move to the planning commission. 
This brings us to item number seven, the origins crossings. This is a major development reviewed by Renee Bradley, and I'll ask Renee to briefly introduce it. Thank you. This is a major development order application submitted by Connell and Associates Consulting Engineers on behalf of the Water Sound Company LLC to develop 217 multifamily apartments within the Water Sound North Development Regional Impact or approximately 19.87 acres of the future land use of Coastal Village One. Uh, the project is north of U.S. Highway 98, identified by the parcel ID and in packet. Uh, there is some outstanding planning comments, uh, as well as engineering. There's um, also some scenic corridor comments that uh, we got turned in late, which has been forwarded to the applicant. And uh, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to the applicant to ask any questions or answer any. Thank you, Renee. Uh, good morning. Neil O'Connell from O'Connell and Associates Consulting Engineers, OCO and N E L L. Um, we've got, uh, we've received a copy of the um, TRC comments as well as the, uh, the DRB comments uh, and have had um, an opportunity to go through those. Uh, we feel like um, the majority of the comments are relatively minor and um, feel like we can address those in a fairly uh, short order. Um, there is one comment on there about the building height. Um, the uh, developer is currently working with their architect uh, to ensure that the building height conforms with um, section uh, 5.0006 of the LDC. If you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any other questions from the dais? Thank you. This is a major development. Uh, it'll get a public hearing at the Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners, um, but we'll take this opportunity to take any technical comments or questions uh, related to the application from any member of the audience at this time. Anyone like to speak? Seeing none, we'll close that portion of the meeting uh, and we'll move to recommended motion. I would recommend a motion that this project, once all comments have been resolved, move forward to the DRB and then forward to the Planning Commission once we have that approval. Uh, I'm hoping that if we can get this turned around within the seven, eight day range that we'll be able to meet the October DRB meeting, keep everybody on schedule. Thank you, Renee. We have a recommended motion. We have a motion at the die. Motion. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise. Uh, hearing none, this motion carries. Uh, it will move forward to design and review board subject to satisfaction of outstanding comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this moves us to item number eight this morning on our agenda Hunters Road East, small scale amendment. Uh, this will also be heard at the Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners. It's an application uh, that has been reviewed by Bob Baraki. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, this is application by Jenkins Engineering on behalf of John King. The current future land use is Rural Village on the future land use map. The request is to amend uh, the comprehensive plan future land use map on 4.67 plus or minus acres from Rural Village to General Commercial. The parcel number is published in your agenda. The location is north on um, 331, um, five miles on the east side of 331 before Jolly Bay Road. The findings are that the proposed amendment to the comprehensive plan future land use map provides for orderly and logical development pattern in the neighborhood and does not circumvene the goals and objects and policy of it. Um, the applicant is here to address any comments. Hey, Bob. Um, Scott Jenkins with Jenkins Engineering. Um, we received the comments. I actually don't think there's anything additional that we need to address for this one and didn't have any questions, so I'd be happy to answer anything you guys may have.
why are we calling this Hunter Road? It's the name of the LLC that owns it. So that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a little confusing for me too. <laughs> we had another Hunter's Road small scale just. It was across the street, actually, um, same same location. We actually already have a Hunter's Road. Yeah, there's a Hunter's Road down here. Right. So, yeah. Um, thanks, Scott. Do we have any Thank questions you. for the applicant? This is a a major development, effectively, that will be heard by Planning Commission and, and County Commission. Do we have any technical questions or comments about this proposed application at this time from any member of the audience? Hearing none, uh, do we have a recommended motion? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a recommendation of approval and move it on to the Planning Commission pending the um, fire marshal's comments and get that and put it into the packet and move to the Planning Commission. That's a no fault from the project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Uh, we have a recommended motion. We have a motion of the dais. Motion to approve. We have a motion, we have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise? Hearing none, this motion carries and we'll move forward to Planning Commission at the next advertising opportunity. Uh, subject to satisfaction of comments. Thank you, Bob. This will move to item number nine, the Lakeview subdivision plat. Uh, request to approve by final plat. This has also been reviewed by Bob Barante. Bob, can you briefly introduce it for us? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a plat application submitted by Interlight Engineering Corporation on behalf of Seaside Acquisition Group, LLC, requesting approval to plat 57 single family lots on 19.72 plus or minus acres with a future land use of small neighborhood. Uh, Mr. Chair, there are a few comments in the application that I don't see anything that are, um, that are major or delaying. Um, I have put in the, um, the cost of the um, fees due at the time uh, of platting. Um, I will um, also, this project has, um, has donated or has deeded the, um, the required recreation fee in their original development order of the 5%, so they would meet that requirement. Um, and um, the applicant is here to speak. Hey, good morning. I'm David morning. Smith with Interline Engineering, and we have received the staff report. Uh, all the, I agree with Bob, all the comments appear to be minor, so uh, I have no further questions. I'd be ha more than happy to answer any questions you all have. Thank you, David. Um, just for the benefit of our, our public, this project is providing a new multi-use path connection from Thompson Road to Helen McCall. That is correct. Yeah, it's along the south side of our property. I know the owners, and we worked with the county, and all worked hard to do that, so we're proud of that as well. And uh, It'll have a bridge that goes over to Helen McCall Park to the east. Thank you. I think it's a great aspect of this proposed project given the proximity to one of our major uh, recreational facilities. Thank you. Uh, do we have any additional comments from the dais? Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Uh, this is a, uh, a final plat. If it will move to the Board of County Commissioners. Um, we'll take the opportunity to invite any technical comments on the application from any member of the audience at this time. Our audience seems to be dwindling. Um, hearing none, uh, do we have a recommended motion? Mr. Chair, I'd like to recommend um, approval of, of this plat and once we receive um, comments, move the Mylar to um, to the BCC for final consideration. Thank you, Bob. Do we have a motion at the dais? Motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? 
Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise? Seeing none, this motion carries and subject, it's approved subject to comments to move forward to the Board of County Commissioners at the next advertising opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, this moves us to item number 10, the Rosadoon Platt, and we have a request to table this particular item. Um, do we have a motion at the dais? Motion. We have a motion to table. Um, do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed likewise? Hearing none, this item will be tabled and uh, can be re-advertised when it's ready to come back. That moves us to item number 11. Uh, this is a request to approve a final order. Uh, the Benecki building, uh, it's been reviewed by Tim Brown and Bob is standing in for 10 this morning. Can you briefly introduce it, Bob? Yes, Mr. Chair, this is a major development order application submitted by SCR Associates Incorporated requesting approval to develop two warehouse buildings totaling 10,080 square feet on plus or minus 0 0.80 acres with a future land use of business park. Um, there seems to be a number of planning comments and a few other comments. I don't... Um, I don't think that there would be anything that would delay this, there, though there are a number of planning comments so, and engineering comments, so staff would make a recommendation to, oh, uh, turn it over to the applicant. I'm Kim Robin, I'm the engineer of record for the project. Um, I'm I've got the comments a couple of days ago, but um, I knew Tim wasn't going to be here, and I hadn't had a chance to talk to him about them, but um, they're mostly just clerical errors and additional information, labeling and stuff. So. Don't see anything that's difficult to respond to? Yeah, it mimics pretty much everything in that commerce park. Okay. So. Uh, could I ask what the proposed use of the warehouse is? He basically is going to lease them to, like, vendors, um, people that work in the area. You know, most of that area there is... Um, small office, mostly storage of their work product. You know, I don't know that who's going to lease it to. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Chair, there is one um, kind of, um, I forgot, on this one that I was working with Tim before he left. Um, though the county um, doesn't enforce the restrictive Covenants. However, the current covenants associated with this parcel do not allow for a warehouse use. So we just wanted to point that out. Though we don't enforce it, it would be problematic moving forward with it. Can I suggest that the applicant address compliance with the covenants yeah, restrictions? Yeah, I that in the comments. It's just um, a minor. Um, I mean, that, that, we don't enforce those covenants, yeah. but I'm sure that St. Joe does. Right. Um, okay, and it, it would be a very good idea at this early stage to make sure that what you're proposing, your proposed use is consistent with those. Yeah, it's just like what's across the street from it. Um, yeah, if you would just give us something that, that addresses that um, at the resubmittal. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Bob. Do we have a recommended motion? A uh, couple of questions I had or, about the future road there. It, it, you're not proposing to improve that road, but with these comments, you, you feel the applicant will be agreeable to that? Um, there was a stabilization. Yes, I think right Note now it's about just a dirt it. road. Yeah, that uh, was a future um, part of St. Joe's future phase, you know, going north um, the way it's platted. So we can call out for some stabilization. But well, it just appears with that entrance drive at the north end of the property there, it's only 15 feet wide, one, so I don't mm -hmm. know how that circulation is going to work. But with 
the proposed use, I would assume some heavier type vehicles right. using that. Yeah, people are out there parking in there right now, that people across the street. Mm -hmm. um, so it does need to be more defined. And then the loading zones are proposed within that right away, mm -hmm. which I don't Yeah, we can have that addressed with St. Joe if you want us to. I mean, um, it was just basically a secondary access to be able to get into their building because there's some overhead access points. Um, is that future road paved? No. no. It will it's have to be if this proposed mm -hmm. project proposes to use it. That's not included in the plan. That needs to be added. Okay. All right. Any further questions from Dodge? This is a major development that will be heard at Planning Commission and Board of County Commissioners. Uh, we'll take this opportunity to invite any technical comments or questions related to this particular application at this time. Anybody like to make a technical comment or ask a technical question? Uh, seeing none, we'll close that portion of the meeting and uh, we'll move forward to recommend a motion, Bob. Uh, Mr. Chair, do you think that with the number of comments this would pass the threshold to possibly continue and resubmit and go back through the technical review process? You see any comments that you might have uh, difficulty yeah, meeting? Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, make a motion to conditionally approve pending successful resubmittal and addressing all staff's comments and then at the appropriate time move it to the planning commission for their review thank you bob we got a recommended motion do we have a motion at the dais motion we have a motion do we have a second second all right motion and a second any further discussion all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise? This item is approved, subject to satisfaction of the outstanding comments, uh, and it will be advertised for the next available Planning Commission meeting once those comments have been addressed. That brings us to item number 12, the Miramar Beach Hotel. This is the major development uh, reviewed by Tim Brown and Bob standing in for Tim. Bob, could you briefly introduce this one for us? Yes, Mr. Um, Chair, this is a major development order application submitted by ECM Incorporated requesting the approval to develop a 71 unit hotel with associated infrastructure on plus or minus 1.60 acres with the future land use of Coastal Center. Uh, the applicant is here uh, and there are, are, there are a, a number of um, comments. Um, and I see that engineering hasn't, um, as of the date of this report, submitted nor the fire department. Um, so we would need those before it moves forward and have their comments addressed. I'd like to turn it over to the applicant to review the project for you. Mr. Chairman, Daryl Bourne, Hill with ECM Engineers, and John Elamar, the project engineer. Uh, we might want to check on the fire department because I remember seeing a letter uh, from the fire department addressed to Tim Brown on this job, so we might want to review that. But uh, we have received the comments. We don't believe that anything in that comments uh, were major. Um, the main issue was the 10 feet of separation between the two commercial properties. We've subsequently redesigned the entire project to uh, account for that, to show the 10 foot of separation and redesigned our parking lot. And so we have, we were already on the path to, to uh, meeting all the requirements of the uh, uh, staff, planning staff and the uh, engineering comments. And so uh, our request would be to accept uh, Tim Brown's recommendation and move it 
uh, to the uh, DRB and give us the date certain that we will have to have our submittals, um, excuse me, to the DRB to make the October meeting. So um, we ask that you move it ahead uh, uh, to the DRB and give us that date that's required to have all our submittals. We're showing um, half a dozen parking spaces in the eastern land use buffer. Yes, sir. We've redesigned it. We've got that design with us today. We've redesigned it to reflect uh, that 10 feet. We've moved, we've moved all those parking spaces out of that buffer uh, and have, we've got a clear, distinct 10-foot uh, uh, landscape buffer in there. Design. So we, we feel like we've met that requirement and it will be reflected uh, in our next submittal. The reason we didn't make that submittal, we wanted to see if there was any other comments that may come from this committee prior to making our uh, submission with all those corrections. Thank you. One thing that I do see uh, yes. is uh, no information provided about rooftop equipment screening on this hotel. That will absolutely have to be screened on four sides. Yeah, I don't guess I know I mean, what that is. You may is. not have gotten that far yet, but screening of air conditioning equipment on rooftops in the scenic quarter is a hot topic right now. Yeah. We um, haven't we haven't got that comment from anyone, so if uh, in the yeah. um, no information provided um, in that particular section of the scenic quarter review in here, um, since Tim did provide that. I may not have had a chance to look at it yet. I don't um, believe we, we've got anything Senate quarter review yet, Mr. Chairman. Um, but uh, we want to we want to do what we need to do to try to meet that October deadline. I, so just uh, giving you some good planning advice. Yes, don't go to DRB without that plan as part of the package. All right, sir. good you advice. Will not Thank get you. out of DRB. All right. They are hot on that topic we right can, now, and we got lots of folks from the audience that are protectors of the scenic quarter that show up and make sure that those things do get addressed at the design review board. All right, sir. We'll, um, we'll make sure be, of that. You'll be way ahead of the game if you have your screening plan right okay. up front. Uh, I'd like to confirm that I'm aware of that. Thank you, John. So um, I've got one uh, engineering question. Uh, and I guess it would be for Anna, as you're representing the county. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, when we got the comment about providing the 10 foot buffer, we redesigned the project and eliminated that amount of asphalt and curb and whatever within that 10 foot buffer. So we got less impervious area uh, than we did when we submitted the stormwater report. The stormwater report's been approved, so I, I guess I'm asking. Since we're doing less than what was originally proposed, have we got to do a complete new stormwater plan on the project? Well, I didn't review the stormwater report, but I would, I would say it would require a revised stormwater report. But I, would say would, I would say that you would need to submit it at, as planned, um, but I mean, the required number of parking spaces is 79, and you're providing 79, so how did you eliminate that impervious area and not add it somewhere else our new plan will reflect that but we've we've uh, uh, just made some got a parking space here and a parking we, we've done it by uh, eliminating some uh, maybe uh, shortening some radar around the uh, curbs but uh, we, we've got that number it was down to the square inch but we've got it so I just needed that clarification on the stormwater then we'll prepare revised report based on the reduction of the impervious area so uh, if the if the committee uh, hopefully the committee will vote to move it to the DRB and give me the date uh, of submittals that I need to, to have uh, all the information to the staff we can certainly do that uh, okay. I just have a question I see the loading zone is back in the corner and it looks like it's about only 20 feet deep. Um, what kind of vehicles will be making deliveries to this hotel? 
Uh, maybe Mr. Elma can answer that. Says Elma. I'm John Elma with the ECM. Um, just to go back to the rooftop units, there are no rooftop units at all. And it's going to show that these are units inside the wall of the actual uh, hotels itself. Hotel units and not rooftop units, so that will be clarified. As far as delivery, it will be nothing other than just regular delivery for supplies uh, for the front office, the um, sanitary type things for bathrooms that come in except for restaurants and food areas. So it will not be any big trucks or any heavy deliveries. Is there any uh, restaurant component to this hotel? It's just a typical continental breakfast type uh, service, if any. At uh, this time, it's not even determined yet because it's not a flag name hotel, so it's not like a Marriott or Hilton, so we don't have to comply with those. So what you're telling me is you won't receive any deliveries with a truck larger than two axles? That's correct. Okay. Do we have any other questions at the desk? Uh, and you don't see any comments that you won't have any problem addressing or have already addressed but just not submitted yet? Yes, sir. We feel comfortable the comments have been addressed and we have a plan actually completed, but we'll okay. submit it on time for the October DRB. All right. Do we have a date for DRB? Don't make that deadline? It'll be, uh, we'll be up all night. But uh, now, it, the question when I talked with Mr. Barani early, uh, he said I had to have all of the 20 sets by the 16th but i guess what i'm asking this is not submittals for drb this is a resubmittal in order to get on the drb okay. agenda all right this isn't the the drb submittal package okay so you're asking me to resubmit my the, the plans uh, about the plan month. addressing these comments okay yes sir all right we'll we'll do that um, the one other thing that was not included in here or in the submittal, according to Tim's review of the scenic quarter, were no elevations and um, floor plans. Do we have those? We, su we submitted them. Yes, sir. We, we, we did the, I don't know, we, we've got record of where those were submitted. Uh, Elevation, use, roof floor materials, plans. colors. We submitted all that. DRB stuff yet? Yes, sir. We submitted the uh, talking with uh, Tim. He said uh, we need to submit the months of reference numbers. And so we did. We submitted the, the months of reference numbers. Um, and according to, I don't know where the confusion occurred there, but it was our understanding that we had submitted all that in the initial application. We've got, we've got record of that so we can follow up and and provide that to the staff um yeah take a look at at his review that's in today's staff report okay um and make sure you address all of those senior quarter items okay uh, he may not have seen them okay uh, he was doing lots of reviews last week to try to get Understand. ready for today yes sir. um and we're happy to provide you a copy of that thank you Any other questions of the dais for the applicant? You did? Uh, we have a recommended motion. I make a motion to conditionally approve pending successful resubmittal and addressing all the comments and then upon that move it to the design review board for their review. We have recommended motion. Do we have a motion of the dais? Motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, likewise? Hearing none, this motion carries, and this item will be scheduled for the design review board subject to receiving a resubmittal addressing comment. And that appears to uh, conclude our agenda this morning. Um, thank everyone very much. Um, we stand adjourned.